Hi everyone. I have just delivered my Suzuki Sunday talk about group lessons called Group as the Glue. And so I thought I would just do a little straight to camera version of it in case any of you who couldn't make it live would like to hear my thoughts. Um, so in case you don't know me, my name is Kate Conway. I run Suzuki Hub, which is the uh, UK's first and only so far dedicated Suzuki Center. We teach violin, cello, flute and trumpet and also baby music and we have nearly 200 students. So um, lots of teachers, about 20 teachers working with us and we're in East London. We are a not-for-profit so we offer discounts uh, throughout um, the different instruments and we have about 40% of our students are on discount of one sort or another. And when we went into lockdown in March 2020, it was really the main concern of mine was not to lose students uh, because I felt like it was such a disruptive and unsettling um, and awful time for so many people. And Suzuki Hub was such a great community and resource for our students and their parents and our teachers. And that I felt I really wanted to make sure that we could continue to offer something online that would keep that sense of community cohesion and um, connection and offer a support for people during that very difficult time. So the group lessons went online pretty much immediately. Um, thank goodness for Zoom. Uh, we, I really couldn't have done it without that. Um, but there were quite a lot of things that came out of that period that we were doing because we felt that we needed something extra for the group lessons because they were online that we may never have started doing in person um, if, if we hadn't had that period of being on, online. And I wanted to share some of those ideas with you because I think some of them are really great in different ways and can continue even though we're not online anymore um, and can be a real bonus for us as Suzuki teachers. So before I talk about that, I think um, I've been thinking about group lessons and about uh, all kinds of lessons. Um, and one of the things I really feel is useful when you're thinking about what you do and what you ask other people to do, your students, their parents, all of those things, is to really work out what the baseline reason for doing it is. Like, there are myriad reasons um, for doing lots of the things that we do, but what is the real base rock of what we're trying to do? And for me, motivation has to be the, one, the first and most important reason for group lessons and for the other lessons. If you don't have the motivation, your students don't want to learn, then it's, <laughs> it doesn't really work out, right? So, um, for me, the motivation of having the group lessons and the students uh, learning from each other, meeting each other, the parents getting to know each other, the community that comes out of that and the sense of shared purpose really is uh, such a huge part of what we offer in our group lessons. And I think that when we were trying to keep that but online in this very new and scary time, in March 2020, April 2020, um, I think that th this was something that I thought a lot about is like, how do we keep that sense of connection and keep our community feeling connected, even though we w won't see each other for who knows how long. Um, and one of the ways that we did that was to make sure that our group lessons were um, inclusive and had a lot of social time in them and not just a play together uh, led by a teacher where you would see people that you know but we would put the kids together in breakout rooms or whatever to um, to interact with each other socially as well as musically and obviously <laughs> chatting on zoom is a lot easier than playing together on zoom so I think one of the things that came out of that use of breakout rooms and putting the kids together was um, offering the students a chance to work on a little project that they would research a composer or a performer um, or a piece of music that they were really interested in and then they would come back the next week and present their findings to the group and we were doing this from about the eight-year-olds up um, and that sort of made me realize okay well, well 
didn't make me realise. It brought to the fore because, as lots of you know, I'm really interested and involved in diversity and inclusion work. And it really made me realise that the students, even in 2022 now, are, if you say to them, go and research a composer and come back and tell us some stuff about them, they are going to, 99% of the time, tell you about a dead, white, straight, posh man. And we were quite keen to try and extend the education of our students out of that um, and so we were setting tasks about finding female composers about finding composers and performers of color of uh, about finding different types of music um, and to about really to open up those conversations about what classical music is who it's for and how it's not just for um, privileged white people and that it can be for all of us and that we can be a part of making that change as Suzuki teachers we can be part of really bringing that awareness to our students and their families. As part of that work I put together a diversity playlist which you can find on suzukihub.com if you click on the three little lines top right you will see teacher hub and you click there and then scroll down a little bit you can see diversity playlist for violin groups and this was this came out of that feeling that the students needed a break from just playing along in the group lessons that we were offering online and also of this uh, desire to include more diverse uh, players, composers, types of music in what I was teaching. Um, I think for Suzuki teachers it's quite a difficult challenge to work out what balance you want between teaching the books and the pieces in the books that we have uh, in some cases as, as children ourselves learnt, um, but that we have been trained in how to teach and that we all agree is such a fantastic resource. and then wanting to bring in other people's music uh, but not wanting to just triple the amount of pieces that the students have to learn at each level. This is a really difficult balance for me personally um, to find and uh, I don't want to drop any of the Suzuki pieces um, but I do want to include other pieces and then how do you make that work for your students without becoming overwhelming. Um, so one of the things that we did was to put together this playlist and just have a break in the middle of the group, uh, especially because the students often didn't want to do solos online and often their internet connection wasn't good enough for it to sound good. So we kind of dropped compulsory uh, solos in group lessons and introduced this video time instead and then we had optional solos for those who wanted it. So the playlist, we just watched one of the videos each week and um, it's all sorts of different types of people, all sorts of different types of music and then there are sort of some conversation starters on that same page of our website that you can explore with your students. And I found this to be really uh, well received by the students. I really enjoyed that part of the teaching and it was a really great realisation for me that we could involve diversity very actively in our group lessons without having to change who was in the group lessons, change who the teachers were, because obviously these are um, really long term projects to, in to diversify the people that are involved in Suzuki is much much more of a big project than than to be able to discuss diversity more generally and this playlist really helped us to do that. I think if you have a regular group lesson that is working well it's so much easier to then uh, collaborate with other people. Within the Suzuki world I feel like we are extremely good at collaborating with each other. We like to put concerts on together, run group lessons together, see our friends and work with them and um, what we're sometimes not so good at is involving people from outside of the Suzuki world with what we do. And with Suzuki Hub I've always been very clear that I would like to do that and so we have had collaborations with um, Guildhall who ran, uh, who hosted a workshop through Palestinian and uh, Israeli orchestra members um, from there and we have done theatre projects with um, Shoreditch Town Hall and uh, again improvising as part of their theatre show um, and we've also had different groups and bands coming in and doing workshops with our students during group lesson time. So this can be a really great way to involve other people without having to get funding, without having to change your timetable, ask your extremely busy students to do yet more. Um, 
if you can find those people who can come to you or you can take your students to them during their set group times, uh, this is a really excellent way to have collaborations with other people. And of course, now that we are all so good with Zoom, you can even have a collaboration, a discussion with someone who is not even in the room, but will come on Zoom onto your computer and speak to your kids through the computer and then uh, maybe come in person another time to do something more um, interactive. So all of these things have become kind of, obviously they were all possible before the pandemic, but they've become more, we've all become more aware of how we can use them since then. Suzuki Hub picked up quite a lot of extra students during the pandemic because lots of Suzuki teachers didn't want to offer their group lessons online and the students wanted to continue with the group and the parents wanted them to continue with the group. So we had um, students from North America, students from Europe, students from all over the UK join our group lessons because they knew that they were all online at every different level and that they were welcome to come and join us. And that was really a fantastic um, reassurance to me that what we were offering was something that people wanted and that I was helping to keep the Suzuki community together and also financially very helpful because we had a lot of students who hadn't been on discount before when the pandemic hit they wanted discounts I really didn't want them to leave because of financial um, hardship I never want anyone to leave because of financial hardship but particularly during the pandemic I felt just have to keep the students with us even if they're treading water during that time and then we can make the money work out after so um, so that was one of the ways that the money did um, balance out and that was really helpful that we had students from all over the place join us for those lessons and of course when we went back in person I didn't want to just ditch those students that we'd had joining us online but who didn't live close enough to Suzuki Hub to come in person and so we started to offer hybrid group lessons we are not offering hybrid groups for the very young ones we're offering it from about book two onwards but in most of our group lessons at that level, we have a couple of students each week who come on Zoom and most of the students who come in person. And this has been really excellent because if a student has been self-isolating or if they're sick or if they go on holiday during term time, it means that they can still join us. And for our most advanced groups with teenagers in, as their schoolwork gets more intense and their time gets more uh, limited, we have been able to continue to keep them in group lesson because it's literally 45 minutes. They log on at home, do their group and then log off rather than if they are traveling to Suzuki Hub, even if they're quite local, it's going to be probably at least half an hour each time, each way. And therefore it's not 45 minutes, it's nearly two hours. So, um, so that's been really excellent for us. And in terms of the practicalities of offering those group lessons as hybrid, we have the students set up in the room as you'd expect and then for violin anyway instead of the far left hand student as you look at your students um, we have a computer stand which is like a really heavy duty music stand with a flat top we have the computer on that um, it goes very high so it's a eye level for me and we have invested in some good microphones so the microphone is on a on a stand that is over the top of the computer and when we're playing all together I will just keep an eye on who's at home on the computer and when we're doing something one at once we just go along the front line and then when it gets to the last student they play in person and then I will unmute the kids at home and they'll have a go on Zoom. Um, if you are interested in trying this with your own students do make sure that you take a look at the best settings for Zoom for Music because lots of parents, even though we were asking them repeatedly during lockdown, um, didn't quite manage to actually set the computers up for the best settings and that makes such a difference and it's just a one-time job. You just have to do it once and then each time they log on, uh, it will just be one button they have to click to make sure that those settings are the same um, because otherwise you can end up with students who can't be heard straight away, whose microphone takes a while to kick in, etc. And that doesn't make it so user friendly. But I think for people who are either working in areas where, where there are big geographical differences in where the local teachers are, <laughs> local teachers, um, it can be an amazing opportunity to try hybrid groups because the, the, you know, the options, if you say to your students, right, 
we three recorder teachers have got together and we live 50 miles apart each. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a group lesson in each person's town every three weeks. And if you're not in that town, you come online. And if you are in that town, you get an in-person group lesson every three weeks. Um, this is a brilliant way to have the kids come together. And obviously some of their parents may think that actually that's so brilliant. They want to do the traveling and come every however often in person as well. Um, but it means that you can run your group lessons together without actually being together. And this is such a fantastic opportunity for us to extend the reach of Suzuki outside of very small geographical areas. Um, because, of course, if you're requiring your students to go to you twice a week, um, then y you are going to necessarily be dealing with very small distances for those kids to travel otherwise it becomes impossible and working together with other teachers requires them to be equally close with you whereas if you have this hybrid option you can do it much more easily something that came up in the suzuki sunday's conversation that i wanted to cover was that one teacher said that they there was not reliable internet so if you are working in a place with um, unreliable Wi-Fi it's a it's good to find out whether it's the Wi-Fi or whether it's the actual internet that is unreliable most people have very good broadband but it's the Wi-Fi that slows it down so essentially when you think about the the speeds you get on your internet the speeds that your provider tells you you have is measured through the wires so if you can wire yourself to the router you will get much better speeds than if you're on Wi-Fi, which is slowed down by brick walls, is slowed down by other people being on Wi-Fi. You know, the air is full of all of these communications um, flying and bumping into each other all the time. And uh, if you can get on a wire, then that works a lot better. You can buy a um, pair of things. I'm sorry, I don't know what they're actually called. A pair of plugs that you plug into your power supply and one of them goes next to the router and literally wires in between this plug and the router. And that, that will basically co-opt your power ring to deliver um, the internet. So that's called the ethernet. And that means that you can plug in, even if you are several brick walls away from where the router is, if you plug this in at the router end and then you plug it in where you are and then you wire yourself, like I have, um, between your power supply and your computer, then that means you will get the best speeds because the Wi-Fi is, no, is, is nowhere, it's not slowing it down. For most computers, you don't need to turn your Wi-Fi off, it will just pick up the best speeds. But if you feel like your computer is not responding in the way you expect it might be worth turning off the wi-fi and making very sure that it's using the wired um, speeds that can be really excellent and also you can buy a wireless internet provided um, it's like a dongle it looks a bit like a battery charger that you plug into your computer and that will pick up the best 4g or even in some areas 5g um, uh, wi-fi that you can get and that moves with you a bit like a really powerful mobile phone it does depend where you live and where you're um doing your groups what kind of speeds you'll get on that but it can be a good option if you don't have access to the wi-fi in the building that you're using for example um so i think that um the idea of hybrid group lessons has really been the one thing if i had to choose just one that i took away from the the pandemic that would be the thing that has really changed how I feel about all sorts of events and I think that that is reflected in most of our um, cultural offerings that you will see a theatre show that you can see online or you can go in person you will see a concert that is being live streamed or you can be in the audience and this is just a, a, an amazingly exciting development for us to be able to access so much more um, culture and music and enjoyment than we had before. So the things that we are continuing with at Suzuki Hub that came out of the pandemic are the videos in group lessons and the discussions that come out as a result of that, are the hybrid group lessons and are the um, sense of ease with which a collaboration can be organised. And I think that all of these things were perfectly possible before the pandemic hit, but they hadn't really become obvious to us. And that it's so brilliant now that we have these options that everybody is um, comfortable with and that we can um, 
diversify in every sense of the word our offer to um to the world about what we are doing and we can make our work so much more available uh because you know at heart we all want to share the suzuki approach and the fantastic benefits and um the joy that it can bring and if you can embrace these ways of uh, including new technologies in your group lessons then your reach becomes so much more wide and so much more um, so many more students can can be involved with what you're doing and that is really excellent and of course it means that you can work more closely with people who are not geographically close with you and to really build that sense of community between you and other teachers and your peers and the parents can do the same and the students can do the same. So I hope that this has been a helpful set of ideas. If you have questions, please feel free to email me, kate at suzukihub.com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you see videos like this, lots of teaching videos for students. Um, and obviously I take requests if you have something you want me to cover. I'm very happy to do that. Uh, so if you go to YouTube and you type in Kate Conway Suzuki, you will find Find my YouTube channel and I would love to have some more subscribers and to share my ideas with you. So thank you for your time and take care.